Welcome to ECLMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we have discussed magnets, how to make magnets, properties of magnets, and even how to demagnetize magnets. But in this lesson, we are going to discuss how to store magnets and the uses of magnets. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe how to store magnets so that they don't lose magnetism easily and then finally explain at least five uses of magnets. So one of the ways in which magnets can be demagnetized we said is through self-demagnetization and self-demagnetization takes place when you don't store magnets properly and in the process they undergo demagnetization where the dipoles disorient in the domains hence losing net magnetic field so the essence of storing magnets properly is to ensure that the magnets will last longer and they don't lose magnetism easily so if you have two or bar magnets and you want to store them then you are going to store them in pairs if you are storing bar magnets you have to store them in pairs two of them uh, at once then what you do you will use what we call ion keepers soft ion keepers these are soft magnetic materials or soft ion bars which are magnetized easily so you are going to use two soft ion keepers for two or for a pair of uh, magnets so in this case you will lay the magnets in such a way that unlike poles are close to each other so if you have Two magnets here which we have said you are going to store them in pairs this north pole and this south pole then the second magnet should be in a way that the two the, the opposite pole is close to each other so here it will be south pole and this one here will be north pole then now you will use the soft iron keepers i'm going to draw them using a different ink so you will use soft iron keepers Soft iron keepers, you will put them uh, adjacent to these um, magnets like this so that they are in contact and they join these two uh, poles like that. And then on the other hand or on the other side also, you use the soft iron keepers. So these are keepers, keeper, and this also a keeper. Then this one here is a magnet so you store magnets in pairs with opposite poles close to each other and then you use soft iron keepers now what happens this soft mag this magnet or these magnets will make these soft iron keepers to gain magnetism and when they gain magnetism remember for it to be attracted then it means this idea will gain opposite pole that is south pole and then this side which is in touch with the south pole will gain opposite pole that is north pole then this side close to north pole will gain south pole and then this side will gain north pole so through this process there will be a close loop of dipoles inside these domains like in this case uh if i can draw if i can draw the position if we have the domains here these are domains and we have the dipoles so in this case, the domain on the upper magnet here will be facing in this direction like that. Here they will be facing like that, North Pole, and then here they will move from North Pole to South Pole like that. Then in this case, they will be facing a uh, North Pole like that. Then here they will move from North Pole to South Pole, then like that. So here there will be a continuous loop of the dipoles inside this magnet and therefore there will be no room through which this magnet will lose or they will the dipoles will be disoriented so the purpose of these ion keepers is that they will gain magnetism and when they gain magnetism they will maintain a continuous closed loop between the two magnets and therefore magnetic concentration will be concentrated within the magnet therefore they will last longer and they will not lose magnetism easily 
And if you have a U-shaped magnet and you want to keep it, then what you do, you will only use one ion keeper. So in this case, if this is North Pole and this South Pole, what you do, you will take a soft ion a keeper, in this case, a soft ion bar, and then you place it there. If you place it there, this one will gain South Pole, and then the other side will gain North Pole. So in this, this the magnetic field will be moving from North Pole through this South Pole to the other North Pole, and then this one to South Pole. So in this case, there will also be a continuous loop within this a U-shaped magnet, and therefore it will not lose magnetism at all. So through storing this one, a magnet can last longer. But if you don't store it like this, it will undergo what we call self-demagnetization. So we have some of the applications of magnets, and one of the applications of magnet is in hospitals, where they are going to use a magnet to remove piece of iron from a patient's eye all other body parts. So if you are working with iron and then some of the particles of iron jump into your eye, they are going to use a very strong magnet to attract those pieces of iron and then the patient will be uh, free. Another way in which they use in hospital is in what we call MRI, or the magnetic resonance imaging, a technology which uses very strong magnets to take pictures of patients or internal body of the patients. These pictures, we are going to realize that they are very clear than even the X-rays. So in this case, they are using magnetic resonance. These magnetic resonance imaging machines, they have very strong magnets, which are going to create a very strong field, which can picture the interior part of a body and therefore make treatment easy. We also have the uses of uh, magnets in industries. In industries, magnets are used as stirrers, and sometimes they are used to lift iron scrap metals efficiently. Another application of magnets is in the weather stations, where magnets are used to reset sixes maximum and minimum thermometer. Remember what you discussed in thermal expansion, expansion in liquids? There is an instrument that we discussed called sixes thermometer. That has two limbs, and inside those two limbs, we have steel index, which are used to indicate the temperature of maximum and minimum within a day. So for you to reset those steel indexes, you use a magnet since steel is a wood or is a magnetic material. Another application is in navigation, where the compass needle utilizes magnets to show direction. Like in the diagram we have here, the first diagram, that's a compass needle. It has a magnet inside, and that magnet aligns itself with the geographical North Pole and South Pole. And in that way, it can give navigators, especially in the sea or in space, a direction. We also have another application that is in computer, hard disk, all audio and video recorders. And in this case, Magnetic tapes are widely used in audio and video recorders for data storage and play parts. The sixth application of magnets is in the loudspeakers. So loudspeakers convert electrical signal into sound signal, and they use magnets to do that. We are going to discuss this in the next topic, but what you should know, the magnets that you find in these loudspeakers are very important in converting the electric signals into sound signal. We're going to discuss that in the next topic. Another application is in the magnetic screwdrivers. More often you see technicians lifting a small screws using these screwdrivers. And you wonder how comes that screw get attracted to that screwdriver? These screwdrivers, they have magnets, which helps these technicians to lift those screws or to put those uh, small screws into place since it's very hard for you to hold those screws with your free hand. So that will mark the end of our lesson today and the end of our topic magnetism. In the next topic, we are going to discuss measurement two. Then later, we will discuss magnetic effect on electric current. 
So you will need this topic for you to understand that topic of magnetic effect on electric current, especially in magnetization of soft magnetic materials using electrical method.